Hi, ladies and gentlemen. At this point in time, there is an issue in Ghana that I want to talk about it. Um, I've seen a lot of people insulting. I've seen a lot of people making gestures on social media in order to portray how big they are or how powerful they are. I've seen traditional leaders some way somehow telling their history to justify how powerful they've been in the past. And I've seen a lot of young people also insulting. And then I think that in their minds, the more you are able to insult or if we have many people insulting a particular traditional leader, it justifies how powerful they are or how you cannot touch their traditional leader. Now, this is what I want all of us to know and understand. Now, what is power? Or how do you become powerful as a traditional leader, as a nation, or as a jurisdiction? Now, let's not forget that the world we see today has been a blueprint of some other intelligent men who foresaw the future, made moves, and were able to get whatever they were supposed to get out of the world. So back in the days, British rule, you know why the British rule? British rule because in the 1600 and in the 1700, that is where industrial revolution started. And then when it got to a point in time where they needed resources and they needed to travel to other parts of the world, it is that point where they came through our jurisdiction enslaving us and then gained that power, got the resources they were supposed to get, got the manpower to build the economy. This is power. When you have the intelligence to predict the future, work towards the future, and then be able to consolidate your power in the past, that is what makes you powerful. So even though industrial revolution started in the British, somewhere in the 16th and then uh, 1700, today, if we are talking about powerful nations, it is US and China that are rocking shoulders. Nobody talks about uh, a British. But if you want to see how industrialization came about, it is the British. So British had the power back in the days. But the question is, how powerful is the British today? So even if you have power and you are unable to hold on to the power smartly through being able to predict the future, being able to build towards the future, to be as strong as you can, you might lose that power and you might lose that respect. If you don't have a strong economy and if you don't have a strong military, you can never become a powerful country in this world. And that is why China, after building its economy, China is building a strong military base just to consolidate that power. Now, I will limit that to our traditional leaders. Look, some of our traditional leaders in Ghana have beautiful history, heroic history, powerful histories, and all that. But history alone does not make a jurisdiction powerful. So this goes to the youth who are using insults to justify power. Insult doesn't make power. Um... The things we think or we do on social media, that makes us louder. That makes us feel that we are powerful. Those things are not power. Now, if you make it possible for your children to learn your history, know where you are coming from, and being able to identify the shortfalls in your history and plan ahead towards reducing that shortfall in the future, that is power. So I say that for many traditional leaders, today in Ghana, who are fighting over history, the little advice that I will give us, nobody has stopped anyone from writing books. So for example, um, if Doma Hennett is listening to me, I think that it is okay. If uh, a lion is telling his history, he will tell it in, it in another way when a hunter is not around. And if a hunter is telling his history, he's going to tell it in another way if the lion is not around. So whatever you believe is your history or whatever you believe is factually correct, I think that have a committee and put together a history book that tells the history of your people and distribute it among your younger generation and let them carry the history beyond social media. So, for example, um, if you want to transfer knowledge of your history, and you feel that your history has been told wrongly by another people, put it in a book. Make an effort to put, to rewrite your history. Ghana education, don't, don't put uh, um, all the responsibility on Ghana Education Service because Ghana Education Service has failed us, even in terms of Ghana's history, that 
When you read Ghana's history or the history books that are taught in our basic schools, and when you listen to history from elderly people and many other sources, you realize that there is a huge gap in Ghana's history. I mean, when President Nanado Danko Agufuado came, there have been some little amendments in the basic uh, 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 school books with regards to our history. And then we've had people talking about the big six and how they even came about. And then their relevance with regards to Ghana's independence. There are a whole lot of issues. There is a challenge when a country doesn't have a single truthful history where we all share. So even with Ghana's history, traditional leaders would have to know that there is a challenge with it. So traditional leaders should take the responsibility upon themselves, write their own history, and transfer it to their generation. Write your history, share it to the people within your jurisdiction, and let them read about your history. When everyone knows about your history, that's okay. So... Um, a bit of the social media clash. We can go beyond the social media clash and then start writing books. So there can be a book by Ajman Bedu, there can be a book by Asante Hene that tells the history of his people. Nobody's going to fight you if you have your history in your book and it's in the library and then people can refer to it. Everybody has to tell his history. And I believe that all these beautiful traditional leaders, uh, the Ahanta uh, uh, Bedu Bosu, I, 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 I have we have a new one. Everybody should write your history. Don't allow anybody to tell your history. Tell your history as you are alive. Now, finally, many traditional jurisdictions are going to lose their power psychologically in the minds of people who used to respect them. You know why? There can be a traditional jurisdiction that is so powerful. But the truth of the matter is the demands of today's population might be different from the demands of yesterday's population. So for your traditional authority to be relevant, your authority has to be relevant to the current generation in serving the needs and wants of today's generation. If it does not do that, the connection between the aspiration of the youth or the aspiration of the generation within your jurisdiction and that of the aspiration of the traditional authority, when there is a mismatch, there's going to be a problem. What this means is, you can have a great history, but when you're unable to consolidate the great history of the past to build on a solid future, you will become irrelevant. You will psychologically lose your respect in the minds of people. You can be your, in your jurisdiction and feel that there are a lot of people who respect you, though. That is from your perspective. But deep down in the minds of people, you might lose that respect. So whatever made it possible for you to come together in fighting, that same spirit should help you in protecting whatever gains you made in the past. For example, if we believe that political authorities are not protecting our resources in Ghana, especially traditional resources we have, chiefs should be able to step up their game and let the executive or let the political figures understand that we want to protect our lands. From 1992, we've monitored closely We've realized that the benefit coming out of our resources is not enough. And at this point in time, we want a constitutional amendment that will give us some level of power with regards to our resources. I believe that if Asante Hine says that he wants to have a direct benefit with regards to his resources and how his resources is distributed, I'm not sure that anybody can stop the Asante Hine. Same happens to, same to Doma Hine, same to Achim Hine, same to other traditional leaders. What that means is, if all these traditional leaders have aspiration of controlling their resources, because you see, the point is when political leaders fail, instead of the people to solely blame political leaders, they are equally going to blame traditional leaders because they feel that some traditional leaders are in bed or some traditional leaders are equally part of how the country is even governed or how the country is governed and therefore they will, have to, they will come back to blame some of our traditional leaders. So for this not to happen where traditional leaders are continually being blamed, Please take charge of your resources. Take charge of your water bodies. Don't leave this to political leaders. People who have voted to come back, who have voted to come into power, after every four years they go, or they come, or after every eight years they would have to vote on them. No! You are the custodians of the land. If there are certain provisions of the constitution which is not in favor of you, constitution are written by humans. 1992, constitu 1992 constitution was written by humans, and therefore, it is humans who will sit down for an amendment to be done. So if these chiefs really want to show us how powerful they are, we want them to come together, sit with these political leaders, 
make an amendment in the constitution that will make it possible for them to have control over their resources or over their natural surroundings. By that, they can be able to hold themselves accountable and hold other sub-chiefs accountable. So the insult, especially with the youth or other social media influencers, I don't think it makes any sense. The abua, the kwasia, and then all those things in the 21st century, it has no hold. It is uh, only some archaic oyen krasasem. It has to stop and we have to stop. There is no need. In a forward thinking or in a, in a, in a 21st century thinking, that has no space. In a world of uh, 21st century thinking, it doesn't have any space. Oyen krasasem, total in krasasem, which has to stop. And I'm urging all the traditional leaders that it is now time to step up, come together, and get some level of control over your resources and protect your jurisdiction so that when your youth want to hold you accountable, you can be accountable. Thank you very much. And I believe that um, for many who come across this video, we can learn some lesson out of it. If we're really serious and we want to stop mismanagement of Ghana's resources, chiefs, you've seen it before, 1992 constitution has been workable for 30 years plus. If you have a document that is not working, you can't pray to God for that problem to be solved. Humans and thinking solves problem. Let's be proactive and solve some of these challenges. My name is Kwame Ofer. I'll come back with more. Thank you.